Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth. Hello folks, welcome to another program in this series, Homo Politicals, in which we look at contemporary issues thrown up, as I always say, by contemporary Nigeria. This morning, appointing loyalists as resident electoral commissioners, the people we call regs, then the question of discretion. You know, I've heard it said that the first people, the first thing people lose once they get power is politeness. And you know, this politeness, especially in politics, uh, would open doors that the best education cannot get that. Consider this, making appointments into public offices without a recourse to discretion, more so in a volatile environment such as ours, is not just tendentious, but bigoted and some would say one-sided. The appointment of four persons suspected to be members of the All Progressives Congress, the APC, the ruling party that is in our country, has raised the roof, especially now. The civil society group, uh, I should, please let me say, two civil society groups, namely the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, and 34 concerned persons in this country have dragged President Bola Tinubu to court in Lagos. They are praying the court to set aside the nominations of the four. Uh, according to them, the process is unconstitutional, unlawful, and therefore null and void. Discretion, they say, is the better part of valor. Again, a failure to observe standards of honesty or modesty is known as impropriety. This morning, we look at the propriety or otherwise of appointing loyalists as wrecks in our country. So my guest this morning is the unputdownable uh, journalist, political commentator, Emeka Madunago. I agree to you, Emeka. Yes, I agree to you too, Susan. Yeah. Emeka, but the first reaction to a story like this would be, we've been there before. Well, the more things change, the more they remain the same. The French uh, would say. Yes. You see, Nigerian politicians keep finding new ways of circumventing, lay down procedures. The very laws they claim uh, to be elected into office to uphold are the very laws they do their best to circumvent. They do their best to make those laws of non-effect. And this is, this is a clear example. Appointing it gives the impression we have perfected it. Unfortunately, yes. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. We've no, gone no. from we've gone from snatch, uh, deploying talks to snatch ballot boxes, from scattering ballot boxes to now more scientific methods of of rigging elections. You know, mm. so. so, so Subverting the people. Subverting there. the people, subverting the, democrat, the, the democracy, subverting the will of the people, and even moving ahead to ensure predetermined outcomes in the electoral process, like we saw recently in the last election, where there were. Let's stick with the Rex. Let's stick with yeah, the Rex. With, 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 yeah. with the Rex. You see, um, I think out of 19. Uh, new resident electoral commissioners, you know, recently approved by the Senate. Uh, I think three are said to be uh, loyal to the All Progressive Congress, while the fourth one is said to be a former special advisor to a former People's Democratic Congress, uh, People's Democratic People's Democratic Party governor. So, what do we have? Politicians who are not getting into office to serve the people to make democracy better. But what are they interested in? Just to entrench themselves in power. Then recently, mm -hmm. uh, the APC you know, started towing that line and said they will be in power for 100 years. And I wonder what they mean by such grandiose expectations. 
But be that as it may, you see, uh, the, 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 the reason for appointing non-partisan resident electoral commissioners is to ensure the sanctity of the electoral process, to make sure that the electoral process is not circumvented in any way, to make sure that the electoral process is as transparent, credible, free, and fair as possible. Emeka, so, so by law, who should appoint Rex, the resident electoral commissioners? Well, <laughs> the entire electoral system, like uh, we have heard you know, from the majority of Nigerians, needs to be reformed in such a way that there won't be any... No, no, address my question because the viewer is interested. So who should appoint Rex, resident electoral commissioners? Well, the president can nominate... That, that's what the law says. So, yes, I, I think the president should still nominate. Okay. But the president should exercise... Well, are, are you not uh, scandalized, if not surprised, that the Senate went ahead to approve this, this appointment? Yeah, it's, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. Um, under so, the former... Uh, 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 aren't we in a quandary? Very, we're in a quandary. Because under the former um, administration of uh, Muhammad Buhari, you see, we thought we had a rubber stamp Senate. A Senate, a National Assembly that was ready to approve everything from the executive. But this time, I don't know what to call this uh, National Assembly. I mean, the, the 10th Assembly. The 10th Assembly, without exercising discretion or even listening to the public. The, the 10th Assembly has shown itself to be, to be violently opposed to the will of the people. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that the president even chose to nominate persons who are clearly partisan. This is an affront on the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. No man can be bigger than the law. No man can be bigger than the constitution of a country. But what do we see? We see people who think that they have the, you know, they have the power to determine yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, we, so, so, sometimes you wonder if these things are deliberate. They are deliberate because Nigerian politicians don't value, they don't look at values. They just look at primarily at interests. Here As, and now. Yeah, here and now. And instant gratification, immediate gratification. They don't look at national interest. They don't look at values. They don't look at ethics. They are not driven by, you see, the values that undergird modern societies. So you just find out that Practices that had been jettisoned in other climes, what we some people might prefer to call senior climes, mm. are things that Nigerian politicians, you know, keep bringing out. Otherwise, in an election, why would you have pre-filled resource sheets? Mm. If the intent is to go and serve the people and not to loot the treasury, then what you will do is to make sure you do as much good as possible so that the people in appreciation will vote for you. But what do we see? So much violence. Look, let me tell you, the average Niger Nigerian politicians today are just enemies of the state, enemies of the country, enemies of the system. They don't mind how many people are killed. They don't mind how many properties are destroyed insofar as they are able to impose their will on the people. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is that even institutions of state, the security agencies are ever so pliable, so willing to offer themselves. Yeah, okay. But these same people will turn around tomorrow when it doesn't work for them, when they are maybe unjustly retired, and then they start trying to, mm. you know, uh, cut public support. Yeah, it may come up, if you don't, uh, let me sound off for once. You remember there have been the cases of two resident electoral commissioners, the one for Sokoto State and the one the other for Akwaibong State. They yes. stood their grounds, but they never, they never went any far. Well, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, but you see, the sad thing is that you keep finding people who are willing to lend themselves to such ignoble practices. They never learn from the past. They never learn from people who were available for hire for such things. Mm. 
Mm. They never learn from the sad experiences of such people. And so, what do you find? The same vicious cycle keeps repeating itself. The, the, the tendency is that, yes, set up and the other folks... Yes, budget, yes. Uh -huh, ...have uh, kicked against these ap appointments. Yes. Do you think, the pre do you see the president as reversing himself or digging in? Well, this administration <laughs> is uh, increasingly been <clears throat> known for reversing itself. It has reversed itself on a number of issues. So I think that uh, the president, the president, the president will, listening. Will, well, is he listening or mm. knowing that actually uh, he can't really go far? Because uh, the former, the, the, uh, was it uh, Jonathan as president appointed somebody who was said to be a niece to a former head of state, <coughs> Muhammad Buhari, mm. and then she became a national commissioner of INEC. So that's, you know, a lot of people found that to be in very, in, very bad taste. In very bad taste. Mm. A lot of people found that our politicians would have learned from such things. Learned to exercise discretion. Learned to exercise restraint. You see, power flows from the legitimacy offered by the Constitution. Yeah. Power doesn't flow from the barrel of a gun. In this connection, I, I remember the saying that the, the government should be afraid of the people and not the people being afraid of the government. At this point, we'll take a break from our discussion, homo politicos, uh, this day looking at appointing loyalists as resident electoral commissioners or regs, the question of discretion. We should return very shortly. Enterprise TV, your one-stop shop for news, programs, human angle stories, the economy, sports, and much more. We go the extra mile to bring incredible details to you. So hop on the train now. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth. Welcome back, folks. Uh, it's still Homo Politicals on Enterprise TV. In Lagos and this morning we're, we're looking at appointing loyalists as resident electoral commissioners Rex the question of discretion my guest remains uh, Emeka Madunagu Emeka seven of the out of the ten new Rex uh, for INEC have been sworn in and and so le le let me share some some of the names with you the screened and confirmed regs are Etekamba Umorin, Akwaibom State, Isa Shaka Ehimeakne, I hope I got that right, from Edo, Uluatoyin Babalola Ekiti, Abubaka Ahmed Mahaji Gombe, Shehu Wahab Inquara, Amino Kasim uh, Idris Nasarawa, and Mohammed Abubaka Sadiq, Niger State. So it, it, it would appear there will be no going back at this point. Well, we await um, the, the decision of the court on the matter, right up to the Supreme Court, because the judiciary must help us to correct defects in the electoral system. A judiciary should stop running away from its responsibility by hiding behind technicalities. It's becoming very, very absurd. And uh, so, Sorry, what, what yeah. about the Electoral <clears throat> Act in, in this context? No, no, the laws are clear. The Constitution is clear on the fact that you cannot appoint, no, you cannot appoint partisan persons yes, yeah. into uh, the position of resident electoral commissioner. So by actually going ahead to swear them in, it shows that the Tinubu administration is not really interested in upholding and advancing democracy. And Nigerians must resist this unlawful and unconstitutional decision. It is unacceptable. You see, because we have off-cycle elections coming up in some states next year and in 2025. One of them is in Edo, 
where one of the loyalists has been sent to. And that place is, uh, even though there won't be upcycle elections at Kwaibom, but of course we know that the All Progressive Congress is really desperate to pick a quiet bomb state. It's really desperate to pick a quiet bomb to pick, uh, uh, um, yeah, to pick a quiet bomb and Delta states. The election in a quiet bomb is not until 2027. Yes, but do you know the damage that such people can do? Because when you put illegal between people now and between 2027, you have the voter register. Voter register has not even been updated. That has not been cleaned up. A voter register that contains all kinds of Names. Including dead ones. Yeah, dead people, fictitious names. Has I not done an audit of the voter register? The answer is no. So, why would we now accept such people? They are going there on a mission. They are not just going there to um, occupy offices. No, 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 no. They are going there on a mission. Emika, let me put this to you. We deserve what we are getting. No, we don't. We don't deserve what we are getting because... We didn't elect people into public office to come and cheat us, to subvert our will. These people were elected into public office to serve the nation, to advance democracy. And so they are not doing so? They are not doing so because so, they feel they are both And so the people are content? People. No, no, the people are, it no, seems. no, the people are not contented. But you see, what we have is state capture of democratic institutions. So when people protest, okay, for instance, you look at what the Commissioner of Police in Kanu State said, uh, that there shouldn't be protests over the sacking of the Kanu State Governor by the Court of Appeal. He has no right to say such a thing. Because sometimes people just speak without even looking into the Constitution. What right do I have to say people shouldn't hold protests? The police up to today have not gone to the Supreme Court to challenge the ruling that Nigerians don't need a permit to hold protests. It's deliberate. It's deliberate mischief. So that they can hide behind, they can hide behind a finger. Uh, to, uh, sorry. To do what uh, they like. A uh, bigger why I dropped that in the ointment is owing to the fact that you and I recall that a former governor of River State, and that uh, Dr. Peter Odili secured a court pronouncement. A perpetual injunction. Perpetual injunction. And nobody has moved against it. That is the, that, that's the country we live in. That's the country we live in. So we deserve what we are getting? No, we don't. Because... So what do you mean by... We deserve, we deserve much better. It's unfortunate that we have that system. But one thing I must assure, you see, those uh, people desperately trying to survive democracy, is that there will always be a day of reckoning. There will always be a day when they are swept out of power, somehow or the other. You see, there is a natural course of events that actually corrects abnormalities. This such, a, you know, such course of events are at certain times beyond human control. You just find out that somehow a system corrects itself. And so what do you find? People must be ready. People must be ready to ensure that Democracy is upheld at all points, by all means. So it is good that uh, <coughs> Sarah, Budget, and some other groups, um, civil society organizations, have gone to court so that we can challenge this illegal, abhorrent, and decadent action. Make sure that Nigerians are not shortchanged. Yes, we are not expecting angels to serve as resident electoral commissioners, but for the mere fact that people have been captured on video, captured in different places, campaigning for specific political parties, it must tell us that we must be on our guard. This is just elongating state capture. This is not about service. Nobody should try to impose himself on me, to try to impose his leadership on me. I must have a right that is a franchise to choose my leaders through the PVC, through my PVC. But where people think that they can even start from the beginning to survive the process, I want to tell them one thing, that it will be resisted. Already the judicial process is on course, and I hope that the judges 
the justices involved in this matter will let the law take its course. We cannot have a separate laws, a set of laws for the leaders and another set of laws for the people. It's unacceptable. All right. Um, so the natural question is, where do we go from here? If the court um, hears the prayer and stops Mr. President seemingly from effecting the appointment, as it were, they will be acting in the breach. There will be an illegal occupation of those offices. Mm. And nobody will cooperate with them. So I felt they should have been honorable enough to decline those nominations. It's not a do or die affair. I, I for one, will never allow any, cannot allow any appointment to mess up my name. Because, you see, there is nothing there is nothing they stand to gain by occupying offices that they know that they are ill-fitted to be in. That stigma will remain on them. That stigma will remain on them, that they lent themselves to be used to subvert the will of the people. So my advice to them is to resign honorably, not to wait for the courts to declare them as usurpers of these positions. That's one. Secondly, I align myself with the position of uh, Mr. Femi Fallon on SAN, that the president should be stripped of the powers to nominate resident electoral commissioners. I believe that there should be a separate process, a seamless process, transparent and credible process of producing officials of INEC. The other thing is that INEC itself has really, has really disappointed Nigerians. And INEC cannot be trusted anymore to organize credible fair and fair elections because but of his actions. INEC is not here alone. You see, the fish gets rotten from the head. INEC is an institution charged with organizing elections. And the constitution says that INEC must provide a safe environment for Nigerians to participate in the electoral process. But by getting itself involved in partisan politics through the acceptance of such officials. I know, yes, these people are nominated and put into such offices and they become a part of the INEC system. But since they refuse, you know, they, they refuse to decline such nominations, then of course what it means is that they are going into INEC not to serve the interests of the people. So what do I what do I say? There must be electoral reforms. Also, there must be judicial reforms. Because you can see, for instance, look at the declaration of winners in the 2023 elections. Really fell short of acceptable standards. I give you an example. Look at the, look at the election in Zamfara, for instance. There were three local governments where elections ought to have been deemed, in, you know, ought to have made INEC to say that the governorship election should have been declared inconclusive. Yeah. But what happened? INEC, through some form of weird ingenuity, declared a winner in the election using the margin of lead, which is contained in INEC's guidelines. This margin of lead principle is not in the Electoral Act. It's not in the Constitution. But they went ahead to use it. And this margin of lead has really caused problems in different elections. They first started this thing in Kogi, in, 20, in 2015 in Kogi, whereby they looked at, okay, the, 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 margin, the, the, the number of cancelled votes, voided votes versus, you see, the lead, the difference between the, the leading candidate and the others. Whereas that of the number of cancelled votes should be more important than that lead. A situation where you have more cancelled votes, or a situation where, in the case of Zamfara, there were you know, certain, uh, 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 certain polling units were excluded from voting for one reason or the other. Then you look at the number of you know, PVCs, you know, number of PVCs registered in that polling unit. You now subtract from the list of voters that were supposed to, uh, that, 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 that were supposed to uh, participate in that election. 
Of course, when you look at it, it's only clear that you cannot declare a winner at this stage. What you do is you must either con you must either con you must conclude the process one way or the other. But INEC has refused to do that in some cases. Emeka, please permit me to quote from uh, Judge Orwell. You know, there's this Im impression that we're living in Orwellian times. Orwell said, political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder re respectable and to give an appearance of solidity, solidity rather, to pure wind. In Nigeria, you get the impression when things go your way, INEC is the people's darling. Yes. When it doesn't favor you, INEC is the, is the uh, bad boy that must be kicked around. No, you see, INEC, I, I wouldn't want to look at it that way because that will beg the question of integrity. INEC must operate within, the, within acceptable, decent norms. INEC must operate within the parameters set for it by the Constitution and the Electoral Act. So it's not about uh, selective justice. It's not about selective morality. No, it's about the fact that, you see, you must provide a suitable environment for Nigerians to be sufficiently encouraged to participate in the electoral process. Now, there must not be any doubt about the integrity of those working for it or the integrity of those holding elections. There must not be a doubt. There must not be a doubt at all. INEC has told us that, okay, the upcycle elections that recently held in Kogi, um, Bayelsa Imo. and Imo, yeah. that it got complaints and it will look into the complaints and get back to Nigeria. It's over a week. How long is it going to take INEC to bring out the results of the investigations? The people who were said to have been arrested, what has happened to them? Where will INEC prosecute them? The money that was seized from these people, <clears throat> where, what is going to happen to that money? So you see when, we see, when we see all these gaps, these are the things that make people to doubt INEC's impartiality. Let, let, let me introduce this element into our discussion. Take you to Liberia. The Liberia Liberian runoff election, presidential election has just come and gone, and a, a new president in the opposition has yes, emerged. Buakai, yes. And uh, President uh, George Weir has congratulated him. Um, does, that, does that not beg the question of Judge Weir not uh, uh, performing below par, if you understand what I mean? No, well... Uh, Do you get the picture and picture? Yeah, George Weah came out to say that he lost, but Liberia won. Don't forget, Liberia just came out of a civil war. And George Weah was cognizant of that fact, that, you see, uh, it might not be so take so many steps for America, Liberia. The war in Liberia has been long gone, you know, five, ten years But the scars are still there. And every effort should be made by Liberian leaders but not it, to... It, but he, it, he had four years again. to rule. Four years, not enough to no, rule. No, was it not six years? I think, I think six, it's six, six years. years in Liberia. Yeah. Um, the six years, not enough to make a top impression. Well, it's, you see, politicians always... Regardless of the war you are talking about. Politicians always want more. Politicians always believe that they are the best, that they are the best can, that can happen in any, that can run any uh, political system. And so, they always believe that there is always there is time, but they forget that from the moment they are inaugurated, the time starts counting. Before you know what's happening, four years is gone. Four years are gone, I'm sorry. Six years are gone. Look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump believed that he won that election. And the way he kept behaving, kept you believe doing that? things. So, he did he win the election. Joe Biden won the election. It was clear. But, you see, politicians should but also learn... a politician learn. remains who he is? Well, a politician ought to be a servant of the people, not someone out to tell who, you, who misuses the powers conferred by the Constitution to oppress the people. The, the inference here is, 
if I was elected for a four-year term yes. and I delivered on my mandate, so the, and if, yeah, if I was deserving of a second term, that needed, I, I didn't need the INEC to come to my rescue or anybody for the matter. that matter. That's what it should be. It doesn't matter. It, you might perform so well, perform so well, but the people will choose somebody else. That's the power of the people. In a sense, quote unquote, permit me to use the word, the tyranny of the voter. That's the power of the voter card. Mm. The voter can determine that, okay, I will not be swayed by, well, what people generally refer to as a sterling performance of an administration. Look at what happened. Okay, look at Jonathan, for instance. Jonathan, you know, was just one in a number of African leaders who considered defeat. The first was... Um, Emeka, you couldn't, con con uh, con you couldn't concede victory, could you? Why not? Was I born there? To, to, to concede victory? You, you mean to concede victory or to concede defeat? Concede victory. You concede a defeat. You concede a defeat, yes. Yeah. So, Jonathan, of course, he... Did the right thing. He did the right thing. Just like the first African leader who did that was uh, Abdallah. Adel Abdallah of Somalia in 1967. Mm. There was also Kenneth Kaunda. Although some people argue that uh, he was in office for 27 years and just left because age was beginning to tell on him, so he considered. But you also had another, another uh, leader from Malawi. You also had uh, Maki Sal from Senegal. You had uh, Good Luck Jonathan from Nigeria. So now you have um, George Weir from Liberia. Of course, Africa must redeem itself from these negative stereotypes which have been brought upon, unfortunately, by reckless leadership, by leadership that chooses not to play by the rules. Africa needs redemption. Africa needs a renaissance. There must be a renaissance. There must be a transformation of how things are done in Africa, particularly the political system. The, yeah. black man, the black man must not continue to wallow in self-pity. Yeah. After you have subverted processes, then due process, then you now come to say, oh, no, 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 it was the colonial masters, they left too early. Oh, it was this and that. No. You look at in Africa, what are the dominant themes in our political system? Ethnicity, religion. Mm. And you see people willingly you, you buying think, into it. You think those can go away easily? Well, there is no country in the world where you don't have different ethnic or racial, uh, or racial uh, nationalities. Biases. There's no, there's no, there's no country uh, in the and world. And the biases are but there. But those things are deliberately subsumed. For instance, look at when Barack Obama came into power. Yes, there was the dominant establishment, the dominant political establishment that felt, no, 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 over the years, no, no, no. This set of people must always emerge as the president. But they came together and said, no, 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 no. we need to have a change. Let's, let's flow away from this track. And Barack Obama became the president. So we need to go beyond these primordial tendencies. Uh, is the fly, the fly in that ointment, is it necessarily African? That's a, that's a very serious question because yeah. anyone will point to other parts of the world, like Asia, you know, South America, where you still have some nations. Yeah, yeah but with... South America, but I, I tell you, in Argentina, the president elect has just gotten congratulated by the man who lost. Yes, you know, in South America, there have been. There have been reforms, you know, gradual transformation. Yes, you know, over time. Well, in, Africa is not ready? Yeah, well, well, we have seen some bright spots here and there. We've seen some bright spots here and there. But we hope... But, it so, will, so, sorry, mm. are, are you not dismayed when you recall Cameroon, our neighbors there, led by a near 90-year-old uh, Paul Beer, well, uh, Museveni in Uganda, uh, and so many, the money in yes. Equatorial Guinea. You see, one of the interesting, so on so one on. Of the interesting things about life is the ability to restrain yourself 
from misusing power. Yes, you have power. But the ability to say no, that I will not survive due process, is a demonstration of the fact that you have been able to conquer self. Mm. Which is but that is one of, victory, unfortunately, yeah. many African leaders, many African politicians lack that. They have not been able to get over themselves. And so when they get into office, they become demigods. They speak as if they can make um, heaven and earth to pass away. But you see these same fellows, when they are shipped out of the way, they suddenly became, become motivational speakers. Telling people, oh, you know, championing democracy, championing things that they never believed in. Things that they never, they never believed in. You will see certain politicians who played ignoble roles in previous administrations. You will hear them now championing certain things. And you wonder, is this the same person who is doing this? So, what I would just want to you know, say is that I will advise these fellows who have been nominated and inaugurated as resident yes, electoral commissioner. In yes. yes, a resident electoral commissioner in defense of public opinion and legality to voluntarily purge themselves of that, of purge themselves of, you know, whatever they think is very interesting in those offices and quit honorably. History will be kind to them if they can do so. And their leadership? The leadership, unfortunately, I think uh, President Bola Tinibu should be conscious of history. I've said this thing a number of times. Should be conscious of history. There will be, there will, history will surely give its verdict. He should be conscious of that. Don't subvert the will of the people because you have only four years. If age and maybe time or so permit, eight years. After that, who, who cares about Muhammad Obari today? Nobody cares. Because if you mention his name, even among some people who are supporting him, you hear nasty things. Look at the ordeal of uh, the former Central Bank governor, Godin Emefele. Did he ever believe that he would be tossed around by young operatives in the, in the DSS? But mm -hmm. well, look at what is going on. A hard fact of life. Look, look at what is going on. So there will always be a day after tomorrow. There will always be a day after power. There's there life be, after power. There's life after power. There will be those minutes after power. The, you, you, look at the interesting thing. APC kept saying 16 years of PDP ruined Nigeria. Today, Bola Tinubu is saying 8 years of Muhammad Buhari ruined Nigeria. So 16 minus 8. You can, 16, no, 16 plus 8, that's 24. <laughs> so what they are saying is that since 1999, we have not had uh, leaders. And for APC to be criticizing APC, that's the biggest tragedy of this Fourth Republic. And there must be a word for the elector. Yeah, the elector, yes. Would, people who ordinarily want to come out to exercise their, their franchise. But, you see, they've been traumatized by poverty. They've been traumatized by ignorance. They've been traumatized by brutal repression of their rights by leaders who do not care about human life, who do not care about adherence to the laws by leaders who want to push themselves, shoot their way into power, by all means. And so, what do we have? You have low turnout in the elections. Low turnout. Look at one of the states in the last, that was it, Imo State. The turnout was 13%. How can you, how could you have gone ahead to declare a winner in an election with 13%? I think this is one of, that's one of the electoral reforms that, need, that, that we need in this country. There must be a threshold that, okay, because if you say, that you must get 25% across the local governments of the state for you to be declared the winner of the governorship election, then there must also be nothing less than 25% turnout. I think Anambra State remains one of the few states where off-cycle elections produce up to 40%. Beyond that, where even in the other states, did you have more than 20-something percent? No. Why? Because nobody wants to go out to vote and be killed. 
That's the tragedy of our, of, of our electoral process. But we can redeem ourselves. All right. Uh, I cannot wait for a day of, of, re, of redemption in Mecca. Yes. And so we can sing the redemption song. So, you yes. see what I mean? Yes. Um, we must draw the show to a close here. But not before telling the viewer um, that whatever is happening to us is by election. We have elected to live like this and be like this. And uh, between 1999 and 2023, a period of how many years? 24, 24 years. years. Yes. Our election, our, elect, our political process is said to be nascent and begs the question, for how long must we remain in the classroom? Aren't we too old for that classroom? Um, Homo Politicals will, will take a break for today and see you next time. Until then, on behalf of Emeka Madunagu, thank you very much. Thank this you. This is viewers. Citizen Jones Susan saying bye bye now. Enterprise TV, your one stop shop for news, programs, human angle stories, the economy, sports, and much more. We go the extra mile to bring incredible details to you. So hop on the train now. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.